assume you've kissed a frog and he grants you one wish. One wish to cure one of the ails of mankind. Which one would you choose? Hunger? Illness? War? Of course, the problem is, if you choose hunger, there will still be illness. And if you choose illness, there will still be war. If I had a wish, I would choose to cure demotivation. With a magic tool that allows us to motivate people whenever we need, we could motivate everyone to solve the most pressing problems of mankind. And we'd always have the maximum energy for it. But of course, there is no frog, no magic to cure demotivation. But there is a new model that helps us better understand the reasons for demotivation. Because it's much easier to find a cure if we know exactly why we are sometimes demotivated. The new model is pretty straightforward and easy to apply. Let me ask you some questions to demonstrate. What do you personally associate with the term head? You might answer mouth, ears and eyes, but most people also associate head with rational thinking, reason, what we find important. So then, what do you associate with the term heart? Heart is generally associated with emotions, feelings, sometimes intuition. In our research at the Technical University of Munich, head is related to our goals and our so-called cognitive preferences, what we find important. Heart is related to the unconscious, to our deeper motives as the source of our so-called affective preferences, what we really like. Scientific studies have shown that the overlap of the two circles is associated with harmony and well-being. So what happens when the two circles don't overlap, when either head or heart are left out? Studies have shown that discrepancies between head and heart reduce happiness, lead to stress and burnout, and they make it harder to reach our goals. In fact, research suggests even if you reach the goals that are not supported by your heart, you don't always feel happy. It's more like, so what? I've checked that box, what's the next goal? The problem is, if you do that for 20 years, pursuing unfulfilling goals that have nothing to do with your heart, you might end up getting to the stage where you say to your partner, honey, I'm just going out to buy a pack of cigarettes. And off you go, and you'd never be seen again. So how do we handle situations where head and heart don't fit together? This leads to another feature of this model, willpower. Well, I guess you're all familiar with the word willpower, but what exactly is it? When do we need willpower? And when don't you need willpower? Can you think of an example? Most people would say, I need willpower when things get difficult, when I struggle, when I need to motivate myself, when I don't like what I'm doing. But I don't need willpower if I like what I'm doing. So you could even say, you need willpower the moment your motivation stops. A lot of willpower is needed to finish big tasks, for example a marathon, especially to get through the last few kilometers. Now let's put this together with our head and heart model. Here, in this section, you need willpower. Head, but not heart. Something is important to you, but not supported by your emotions. For example, doing the dishes, pumping your bicycle tire, working overtime. These things are important, but they're not fun. I call this willpower type one. Exerting willpower can mean motivating yourself with positive images. How happy will I be when the bike runs well again, when the work is being done? Type 2 willpower is needed here, in this section. Heart, but not head. The activity has your emotional support, but is not aligned with your cognitive preferences. We may experience this as a temptation. You would love to do something that is not good for you. Examples are excessive internet surfing, smoking cigarettes, cheating on your partner. These are tempting situations for some of us and we need willpower to deal with them. For instance, by imagining that you don't get your job done on time because you wasted it on the internet or that your partner found out about your infidelity. Here, in the overlap section, we don't need willpower because there is no internal conflict. Now, is willpower like some sort of miraculous tool? The magic that helps us overcome all sorts of internal conflict? If this was the case, we could basically ignore discrepancies between head and heart and just use the sheer force of our willpower. Well, unfortunately, this is not the case. Research has shown willpower can be ineffective. 
Think of how difficult it is to stick to a diet or to stop smoking. Willpower is strenuous. It is not pleasurable to not eat a tempting chocolate cake. Willpower is a resource, just like money, that can be depleted. Other researchers have introduced the metaphor of willpower as a muscle. The idea being that, just like a muscle that is sore after training, your willpower can be used up. So, discrepancies between head and heart can use up our willpower. But what if there is a fit between head and heart? What can we expect here, in the overlapping section between the two circles? The overlap says that what we find important is also what we like. In other words, our cognitive and affective preferences are aligned. Indeed, this is the sector of our intrinsic motivation. I guess most of you are familiar with the concept of intrinsic motivation. We are intrinsically motivated when we do something for the sake of doing it, because we like it. In our figure, extrinsic motivation is this sector, head but not heart. We find something important, because we expect some reward, but it's not fun to do it. As stated before, we need willpower whenever we are extrinsically motivated. So what is here in this sector? Heart, but not head. Here we like something, so it has the potential for intrinsic motivation. But since it is not aligned with our goals, we try to suppress it. So this is what we need to know about head and heart. But then there is a third component of our motivation, which can also be pretty important and shouldn't be neglected. Imagine the following scene. A guy is playing tennis. He seems highly motivated, so head and heart is not an issue here, but he keeps missing the ball. He likes what he does, he finds it important, but he still misses the ball. What would you say this tennis player is lacking? Exactly, he is lacking skills, abilities. So we need to add a third circle to the model. We call it hand to be consistent. Hand is also a metaphor with a broader meaning, skills, abilities, experiences, action-related knowledge. Head, heart and hand. This is actually quite an old triad. It goes back to Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi, a famous Swiss educator from the early 19th century. But of course, the comprehensive model is new. I call it the 3C model of motivation, the three components of motivation. The 3C model suggests that ideally, all three components should be fulfilled. What can we expect if this is the case? What is the optimal motivation? Csikszent Mihai, a Hungarian researcher who works in the States, study people with high motivation. Tango dancers, chess players, surgeons. He asked these people, how do you feel when performing this activity? And he received pretty much the same answers from all. I am fully concentrated on my task. There is no self-monitoring. The time flies. I am in full control over the activity. Csikszentmihalyi called this experience flow. And he suggested that flow is the secret to happiness. Research shows that it is most critical for flow that your heart is in it. 